Hello, and thank you for purchasing your product from Perform Better and allowing us to show you some of the many uses of the great items you will find in our catalog. The goal of this video is to help you better understand the product and to see how you can use each of them. Now because most of the products in the Perform Better catalog can be used in a variety of settings, we will try to show you as many different uses as possible for the home user, the physical therapist, or the trainer so everyone can walk away with some great ideas. We are always available to assist you if you ever need an answer to a question that you may have, so please don't hesitate to call us directly at 1-800-556-7464. Thanks again, and let's move on to the exercises. With so many different options when looking at resistance bands, it is hard to decide sometimes what may be the best one to go with. Some come with handles, some are protected with nylon sheathing, Others may be terrific options when space is a premium and others may be more cost effective. We have chosen to go over a variety of exercises demonstrating the use of the mini bands. This should give you a better sense of how you can use it and the setting in which any resistance band may be appropriate for you. First drill we're going to do here is the monster walks, uh, both forward and backwards. We want to try and stand as low of a crouch position as possible, and then cycle the arms and the legs as if you were going to, to run or to do some skipping. But really try and keep your center of gravity down low. Still want to maintain good technique, good control, and then make sure you're picking the feet up. Don't allow the feet to just slide forward and backwards. Really want to focus on having the feet pick up off of either the turf, you know, in this instance, or, or the rubber flooring that you're, you're doing the exercise on, and then just good controlled mechanics, all right? Try not to allow the band to pull your feet in. Try not to allow your knees to drift in medially, you know, and in, in almost like they were hitting each other, and then really focus on just slow progression. Don't go too fast. When you start to pick up your progressions too much, that's when you start to lose it. Lateral walks are really not a whole lot different um, in, in terms of your positioning. Uh, you still want to stay low and, and really focus on control, uh, picking the feet up, not allowing the band to just slam your feet together, and then watch the knees. You still want to try and keep the alignment, the knees, the hips, the toes, pretty much in a straight line if you're looking at somebody from the front. You don't want to have too much deviation from that. And, and keep your progressions uh, slow. Don't speed it up. Work on technique first, and then if you need to, if you need to pick up the speed or the cadence, you know, do so. Put the hands on the hips. That's not a problem. You just don't want to see people hunching over, you know, placing their hands on the thigh and have a, you know, a really gross breakdown in the technique. You, know, you should see a fairly straight line from the back of the head down through the lumbar spine and the pelvis. Um, and, and good quality technique. But again, the biggest thing is just maintain the speed so it's consistent and really focus on you know, proper body alignment during the entire drill and picking the feet up, making sure that you're not just dragging your feet along the surface. And then when you need to take a break, take a break. On this drill, you're going to have one foot constantly in contact with the ground. On the leg that you're actually moving, I still want to maintain a little bit of flexion in that knee. I want to really focus on the movement though coming from my right hip. All right? I don't want to flex and extend my knee too much. It's always smooth controlled movements. You really want to focus on nice tall posture, maintain a very tight solid core, and then that leg that you're standing on Make sure that you continue to have slight bit of knee flexion in that leg. You don't want to stand stiff-legged. This drill is the exact opposite of what we just did. We just did hip flexion, now we're moving into hip extension. My posture and positioning is still the same. My plant leg, or the leg that's in contact with the ground, still want to try and keep that knee slightly flexed. Still want to keep my posture up, fairly erect, all right? Nice tight core. Only go back as far as you can, maintaining that good form and technique, 
And again, as I go into hip extension, I really want to focus on trying to contract my glutes as much as possible. Reps, do what you feel comfortable with, but keep the speed of the movement and the control of the movement consistent throughout. First upper body drill that we're going to do with the mini band is the bear crawl. Uh, we're going to go both forwards and backwards. On here, I'm going to always have contact with the ground, with my hands and my feet. I want to have the band around uh, just above the top of my wrists. The positioning of the hands uh, on this drill, I want to cycle them just like I would do if I was running. You know, if my left arm is forward, all right, my right foot comes forward. My right arm comes forward, my left foot comes forward. It's the same sequencing as if I was skipping or if I'm running. Biggest thing on here is make sure you pick your hands up. If you notice in the video, I'm not sliding my hands along the surface. Don't go too fast. If you start to go too fast, that's when you have the breakdown of the mechanics. Going backwards, you'll notice, is much, much more challenging, especially with that sequencing. You want to still try and maintain that same position that I did when I was coming forwards. In the lateral walk with the mini band, you're going to assume a push-up position. Biggest focus here is trying to maintain that push-up position. Make sure the hands and the feet are sequencing at the same time. If my hands are moving, I want to try and get my feet moving. Pick the hands up. Don't slide the hands or the feet along the floor. And then control the movement. So don't allow the hands to slap together. Don't allow the band to pull your hands together. If this is happening, the band's too heavy. Go down to the next level until you can control that band throughout the entire movement. Trying to go out for whatever number of reps or distance that you can when you transition from left to right, try not to allow the knees to hit the ground. Try and go back into the movement in the opposite direction. Now in upper body step ups, we're going to demonstrate with the Airx balance pad. Uh, you can do this movement with a balance pad, you can do it with a PB disc pillow, you can do it with a box, a 6 inch box or a 12 inch box. Maintain a nice push up position throughout, maintain control of the band, and then make sure that the hands step all the way up onto the surface. Maintain that push up position, don't allow the hips to drop, so I want to make sure my core is nice and tight, I want them to control the movement. On this, I can dictate my speed. Lateral step-ups with the miniband really aren't much different than the, the straight-ahead uh, step-ups. The only thing on here that really is different is the feet. Uh, my feet are the pivot point. They don't move throughout the duration of the drill. Still maintain a nice push-up position. Make sure you have a band that you can control throughout the movement. Don't allow the hands to just slide on the floor or slide up to the Airx pad. You always want to pick the hands up and then down off the Airx pad. And you also want to make sure that you can control the band. On this one, you really have to stretch that band. You can change the tempo of the drill to make it a little bit more challenging, or I can change the resistance on the band to make it more challenging. And then also, I can change the height of the box. On here, it's just with the Airx pad. You could use a 6-inch box, you could use a 12-inch box, 